has actually it's a story it's this story of about my me my life from the beginning to uh, from uh, my birth to uh, I mean <laughs> look ahead you want to see Michael Monroe as a as a baby <laughs> oh, this is what I, I hope it's not a bearskin rug picture hey, no. who's that who's this kid <laughs> look at this sweet innocent little I had no rush I mean I was in no hurry to grow up I was actually yeah <laughs> drooling like a baby you know I'm just a, Regular guy. My mother wrote this in the beginning of this book. It says my mother wrote a bunch of stuff with me and my brothers, me, my dad, my mom, and my two older brothers. So my mother wrote this uh, piece in the beginning, saying, uh, actually, when the summer I was born, uh, summer of 1982, not 1982, <laughs> 19, uh, well, actually 2002, 2004. No. Uh, when I was born in 1962, which is the year the Rolling Stones were born, and uh, it's the summer that same summer that uh, Marilyn Monroe died. She passed away two months, but about two months after I was born. It was a beautiful, sunny summer, and um, I uh, it was on a Sunday. And the day I was born, it started pouring down rain. It was raining, and it kept on raining throughout the whole summer to the end of the summer. End of the summer, sky was crying as they lost a beautiful soul down to earth. Now, nah, <laughs> anyway, here we go. Look at there. It's got 500 pages. It's got a bunch of pictures, photos all along of the whole story. I just happened to have a ton of pictures with me, Steve Vader's, all, all these years. It's all documented nicely. I like to have pictures, you know. Otherwise, mm. you get kind of like, you know, you follow a story and you kind of just, just, just uh, if you just have like pages and pa page after page of just uh, reading and reading and writing, you get kind of, sometimes it's just like all of a sudden you realize you've been reading it, but you just missed the whole, you're not taking anything in. So, two colors. Per, uh, I think I have that copy of Kerrang in there. You do? <laughs> yeah, that one there. <laughs> there goes. There's some uh, color pictures too. Nice pictures here and uh, some Hanoi stuff. I got my New York uh, stories. Got. Uh, I moved to New York. Oh, look at here. Me, Steve Vader, and Lenny. Triple threat. <laughs> what a, what a, there's some uh, some presence in that picture. Presence. Heavy, heavy atmosphere. Triple threat between the three of us. What do you? I mean, Jesus. I wouldn't mess with those guys. <laughs> yeah, my first, my debut show, my, my gig in New York, I live here in New York, look at that. That's mm. my windows. This is where I uh, I lived for 10 years on East 3rd Street between 1st and 2nd Avenue, the Hells Angels block. The 4th of July Independence Day party was my first gig as a solo artist in America after I'd moved there in 1987. They had this flag, American flag and that logo there, you know, above the stage and uh, yeah, it was one of the coolest gigs. And uh, yeah, so New York, yeah, then Ocean 23. My solo years actually lasted, there was a lot longer than uh, Hanoi ever, but with the old, the original Hanoi in the 80s, it's about four, four, almost less than five years. The rebirth of Hanoi in uh, 2000 to 2009, those both put together are still shorter in years than uh, the, the time I've spent solo, which is uh, what? Until then, it was like 16 years. Anyway, so then <clears throat> here's the story of me from my birth to uh, this day, pretty much the end of the summer here. Um, so you're walking down the stairs, just to see me just then, right up to the, right up to the few minutes ago. Yeah, I was like up until now, <laughs> up until this interview. I'm talking to an Australian guy who seems to want to have the book as well. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, getting closer to today. So here's the uh, new band, and uh, you know, there's the mm. rebirth of Hanoi first. That was gone. I'm looking back at it. I'm going like, yeah, that was good to do. Now we're back here, right there, and uh, here we go with uh, some of the new shows. We got Ginger in the band, then we got Dragon in the band. See, and all the way up to this moment. See, look at the shirt. <laughs> sure. Cool. Oh, can't be too far now. Me and Sammy, <laughs> <laughs> brothers. As, oh, look at there. My head bleeding and the uh, Barbados, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, it's actually the CBGBs. It used to be CBGBs. We did yep. a show there in the 2010, and I kept busting my head on a monitor above me like three, four times. The fourth time it really busted open. I was like, I don't know the place in the spirit of Steve Baders and Iggy and all that stuff. It's appropriate. Mm. And look at there. I have my own star in the Walk of Fame in Turku, where I live. Cool. Right? You know, normally they give them to people who were actually were born in Turku. I got one even though I was born and grew, raised in Helsinki. And these stars you can't buy, like in Hollywood Boulevard, you, have, you can buy it for really? enough money. You can buy yeah. a star for yourself. Mm. This one you have to earn. <laughs> and you're going to the presidential, uh, what is it, the presidential dinner, is that right, in, uh, in, in December? Day, uh, nah. uh, God, whatever mm. party 
that's like a gathering, uh, an annual. Every year it happens. There's a uh, two thousand people invited, and uh, mostly uh, you know, st distinguished, uh, you know, old veteran soldiers, and all, you know, and people that are, I guess, significant. So first time ever I've been invited to go and be there. So uh, it's very cool. Actually, I met the president. Uh, Almost about a couple of years ago uh, at a John Fogarty show in uh, in Finland, she likes rock and roll. Therefore, mm. I love her. She's great. Here's my bike. Look at that. My bicycle is like a Harley. You know, it's like a chopper. <laughs> a friend of mine. Have you Harley. taken that back home with you from New York, or is it the bike? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I bought it in Finland. All right, you bought it in Finland, all right? Yes, yes. So, anyways, and then the most important thing, my cats. Like the four four cats from my life. These are the past three ones. Susie was uh, my cat in New York. 16 years. And, uh, here's my three cats with my. Friend. Susie, as in Susie and the Banshees, spelled no, the same way? Susie one? is Finnish and it means a wolf. Oh, I S -S -I. see. S U S I. All right, okay. There's Gizmo, there's Sippy, and there's the little Missy. She's the only one alive anymore. Uh, mm. All these. But, you know, just some. Uh, some shit, you know. Very cool. It's very cool. It's very cool. Yeah. I was going to ask you um, something, and it's kind of an Australian reference a little bit. Rose Tattoo probably invented the whole biker rock. <laughs> Never need it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy said once, uh, the greeting's too angry. Angry he says, angry, I want to lick your bald head. <laughs> angry, angry, apparently he was like, oh, wow. He's like a cool guy, like, whoever it is. Yes. So, I mean, they probably invented the biker rock thing, the tattoos, and, and maybe um, haven't got due credit for it. Do, do, you, do you feel a little bit the same about the... The, the the glam explosion. Do you think everyone else talks about your impact? Do you think about yeah, it? Much? Everyone else talks about it, and they all say, you know, you you started this, so you you. I'm to blame for. I say, don't blame me for that. For that <laughs> shit. I never. I mean, if you're talking about the people, all, all the, the Sunset Strip scene and whatever. I mean, of course, it's always flattering when someone says, oh, you influenced this and that and made a big impact on some something. But to me uh, personally, I did not relate. To, I could not relate to that uh, that uh, kind of. Uh, Stereotype: rock and roll, rock star, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Cliche. I mean, a bunch of guys with big hairdos, makeup, and uh, who could play their their hairspray cans better than their instrument. And they learn to pose and party, and you know, get screwed up, and you know, uh, act like you know, pretend to be rock stars before they even learn how to play or write songs. So, to me, the music, the attitude, and the uh, you know, being able to play was more important. I mean, I, I would not have the gall to stand up on stage doing you know anything other than if I wasn't able to play and perform hmm. and do something stand there and pose and not really have much of much substance to uh, kind of back it up with uh, I wouldn't have the nerve to be up there I would just you know not do it to, to me but music you know uh, so hmm. in any case I mean God bless him and I think uh, I think something like Guns N' Roses for example that is a great thing to uh, that that's a great thing to uh, to see that they had they they came out and they said Hanoi Rocks was a major influence, but they had their own thing. Mm -hmm. They really took the the, the essential, the, the right things about Hanoi they were influenced by, and they had totally their own thing. And they were the coolest because they talked about Hanoi in the interviews, and they put out, they re, they released the uh, European catalog on the Uzi Suicide label in America. Just just so people would know, uh, I heard Axel just got sick of um, uh, not having people know about Hanoi Rocks, so he they wanted to put them out, and they mm. did, and they actually did something about it. So I really think that's that's a great, that's really cool to, uh, that makes me feel good, you know. Time for another song. What have you got for us?